but know that that's just my personal opinion and I am one person. So you just have to kind of weigh it in. When, I, when you go out and if you see other people using them, ask them, how have you found this drug? Do you, call it, do you find many of the side effects? Who seems to benefit from it the most? Glean from other people who, who use them. Um, under how they work, there's that perox, perox, peroxisome proliferator activator receptor. That's the nuclear receptor. And then there's alpha, beta, gamma, delta. These are gamma. And it talks about increasing the glucose transports. One is in the brain, glute four is in peripheral, is like um, muscle. Okay. Any comments there? Okay, DPP4 inhibitors. So remember when we talked about the incretins yesterday, the GLP-1, and how they're very short half-life and they're terminated very quickly? That's what these drugs do. They kill them. So if you look at the bottom, as soon as they're released, they do their job and then DPP-4 gets them, inactivates them. So these were the first group that came out. So we came out with these drugs that would stop, would um, impair that ability of that enzyme to metabolize endogenous GLP-1. So there's quite a few of them on the market. The one that, is, so there's Genuvia, Angliza, Trigenta, uh, Nacina. The only one I'm holding you accountable for is Genuvia. One, because it means you've got to know about re, um, renal insufficiency when you do it. So for Genuvia, you must pay attention to renal function. Okay? You have to reduce the dose. I think, did I give you a prescription on Genuvia? And you had to figure credit and clearance? Um, I think I did. Grab me clear it. So if you look at that, for people with moderate 30 to 50, it's half the dose. It's once a day dosing, so that's pretty easy for most people. If you're 30 to 50, which a lot of your older diabetics will fall into that, then it's 50 milligrams once a day. If you're below 30, it's 25. It's one of the things I finally find that providers don't pay attention to and don't decrease the dose. What's the expected drop? 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8. It's like spit in the wind. <laughs> Weak drug. People love it, but it's very expensive. I also look at how much drop can I get for the money they're going to have to spend. What are these costs now, Kristen? They used to be very expensive. They're still pretty expensive. Are they like $300? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, yeah. There are a lot of money. For that kind of drop, I want more. And they're still brand name. There aren't any generic yet? Okay, that, that may help a little bit. They're well tolerated. They don't have a lot of side effects. Um, so, I, I never even see the stuffy and runny nose or sore throats or URIs or headache. There are serious hypersensitivity reaction. That is a, that can be a problem, but they are very rare. Uh, so Stephen Johnson, so a type four hypersensitivity is possible again rare. Um, in terms of uh, cardiovascular effect, citagliptin is neutral. So that's another one, reason why I picked it. Allagliptin and saxagliptin increase risk of heart failure. So if you've got somebody who's at risk, don't use those. So I told you how they worked. We don't use them in combination with GLP-1 and agonists, like what we're gonna, we'll talk about those tomorrow. <coughs> like we're gonna use like a, a, a liraglutide. We don't use it with an, a, a drug that's an analog. I don't use these because uh, very much, mostly because there's just not a lot of power in them. Now, for me, I usually saw people who were pretty far advanced. People that tried everything they knew, and then they send them to our clinic to, to do it. So I saw a different population. If you're out in general primary care, it may be a value to you. But they just don't have a lot of power for the amount of money you're asking people to spend. So that's my bias against them.
I just don't find they do much. Sometimes I will use them, often if I'm talking to people about you need to go on insulin, often they don't, if they're not ready for it, then I will use drugs like this or I will use metformin and I'll increase the dose. I'll do some things to buy time and keep talking to them and get them comfortable to the point where they go, I think it's time to start insulin. So I may introduce it. Some people are like, sure, let's go. Most people are like, oh, I don't want to do that. So most of the time, I'm just buying time. Now, that is my approach. That is just what I've found over, over time. OK, um, so next rows, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. These are great drugs, but nobody uses them because the side effects are just socially unacceptable. <laughs> um, so these are drugs that work like fiber. They sit on the, uh, they work in the small intestines. And they sit on the enzymes that break down uh, starch. So what they do is, just like fiber, very similar to fiber, fiber is, is good because mechanically it takes more work for the gut to break it down than it does a simple sugar. So taking this drug, if you ate a high glucose load, here's your blood sugar, and here's time, blood sugar would go way up. You take this drug, can't metabolize it as fast, it's like this, okay? So the drugs, the food still gets absorbed, but the gut cannot break it down as fast and the absorption is slower. So impact on their blood sugar is much lower, okay? So this drug is great on people who have mild disease, early disease, and, but have high prosprandial rises. It really works. It's very good. Fiber, it works similar to fiber. If you think fiber, you can think the same kind of side effects. So the problem is it's very hard for the gut to tolerate. Uh, you'll see that what can you expect? Look at postprandial, 50 to 60 point drop. That's huge. That's big. A1C drop, not so much, 0.5 to 1%. 1% is pretty good if you can get that high. Um, contraindications more go to if they have existing gut disease. The drug, the other thing I like about the drug is it stays in the gut, doesn't get out. So it's like it stays outside the body. So it doesn't affect, it doesn't cause a lot of side effects other than what it's, it's gut wise. The problem is that you have to titrate it very slowly. It's recommended you start with 25 milligrams a day and you only increase it every month. It's so slow. Uh, so that, that can, people aren't going to see a big effect right away. Where if you take that form and you take a sulfonylurea, you'll know it within a day or two. So the biggest thing is that it causes gas formation. So people will have lots of gas. I told you about the guy who uh, was in a cubicle with three other women. And he came back to clinic and he goes, the drug's fine with me, but he said, the three women I work with have told me, you have to change my drug because they cannot stand it anymore. They take his gas. So that is the big, that's what keeps it down. And the fact that I think most people don't use it early on. Um, it's not going to work probably in more advanced cases, even though it, it can be com combined with almost any other drug. Um, you, if you can, if someone will use it and you can tolerate the, the, uh, the time it takes, you add about 25 milligrams every, every month, up to about 600 milligrams. I mean, you've got a, a wide uh, dosing range. So there's two of them in the class. There's a carbose and niglitol, but I don't see them used very much. Anybody out, did you fill a lot of prescriptions for them? Did you all, did you ever see it? Um, we fill like maybe one or two every 90 days, but... You know, I'm amazed they've stayed on the market because they I, I can't believe they have much of a... They make much off of it. Now, here is under uh, the last, next to last uh, question. 
the, the drug interactions. Because this drug interferes with the ability to metabolize sugars, you have to be careful and you have to warn the patient if they're taking this drug with another drug that can cause hypoglycemia, uh, you can't use sucrose. You have to use the glucose or fructose. So that's the biggest warning you have. If they, let's say they were on this plus sulfonylurea. They were taking glipizide and acrobose. Or this drug and insulin. Then they have to have a glucose source, not a sucrose source. You can buy glucose tablets. So that's not a big deal, but you need, that needs to be warned. Okay. So just something in the armamentarium. Okay, we'll pick up SGLT2s tomorrow, so bring those with you. Bring this with you, and then we'll also pick up injectables tomorrow. Bring your little table back also. Okay, thank you. You did well today.